guess when you were in UWF, WWE contacted you? I contacted them first and then, and then Vince called me. What did you send them a tape or something? Yeah, I sent them a picture. I sent him a picture. Yeah, I'll never forget. I was laying in the sunbed, and um, I was living in Baton Rouge, and I was laying in the sunbed, and the phone rang, and I pick it up, and and it was Vince McMahon. Goes, this is Vince McMahon. Um, you sent me. A, this is Missy Hyatt. You sent me a photo of yourself. You want to come to work here? And I was like, uh, uh. Because me and Eddie both sent pictures, and I was like, uh, yeah, yes, you know. And then I'm, and Eddie's there. I'm like. I'm like, yes, hold on one second. And I just hand the phone to Ed because I couldn't even talk to him. I was just like in shock, you know. I was like, oh my God, Vince McMahon calling, you know. So. And Eddie had worked for his father, I guess, so Eddie knew him. Yeah, well, Eddie had worked there before. Eddie had a bad car accident. Eddie worked there in, I think, 86 or something. No, not 86. Oh, I, I can't even remember the days. 82 or something like that. Maybe 82 or 83. Eddie worked there. And Eddie, 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 Eddie knew him from working there. So did they bring you in right to a taping or did you Well, no. Um, first he had me come up there for a meeting. And um, me and Eddie flew up there for a meeting. And the whole way up there, Eddie kept saying, I think they're going to give me Piper's Pit. They're going to give me Piper's Pit. You know, I can do Piper's Pit. And then when we get there, you know, we have the meeting. We go in to, first we talk to Jim Barnett, which I love Jim Barnett. He was so funny. And then we go in there and talk to Vince. And Vince is like, uh, Missy, I'm thinking about giving you Piper's Pit, you know, because nobody can, nobody can follow up with Roddy Piper's Pit. But maybe a woman can, so we're going to give you the opportunity to do it. And I was like, oh, okay, that'd be cool. I, I can do that. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just like, I'm going to get a, you know, and Vince is like, you're not going to be able to go to the grocery store by yourself anymore. You're going to need, you know, a bodyguard. You're going to be a superstar. You're going to be the next you know, best thing, big thing, blah, 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 you know. And I'm, you know, all I'm seeing is like, I'm going to get a doll. I'm gonna have a doll, you know. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be in WWE or WWF, you know, at the time. And um, so the whole way back, and and then he told Eddie, you can do whatever you want. You can manage. You can wrestle. You can do whatever you want. Well, when we're leaving on the airplane back, because we had to work that night, you know, Eddie's like, I think I'm gonna stay in UWF because they're gonna, you know, I'm. I, I'm the assistant booker now. Maybe I can get the booking job, blah, blah, blah. I, you know, if you want to go, you can go. You can go to WWE. You know, I'm like, I don't know about you. I'm going to WWE. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm going to be a superstar. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so it, that, that was a rift between us. But um, do you think that was a good decision by him with the, the amount of stars they were making at that time? I don't know. I mean, he wanted to be a booker. That was his main goal. If he didn't have to wrestle and just be a booker, he would have done that. Okay. If he had the opportunity. If they said, you can be a big superstar or you can be a booker, he would have taken. And, and make less money and be a booker, he would have taken less money and been a booker. So, for Missy's Manor, was there any other discussions between that meeting and the first? Well, meeting? now, you know, I go back up there another time to take pictures and, you know, they bought me clothes. It was so wonderful. I got to buy clothes and they paid for them and they bought me all these cool clothes. It was so nice. And um, they had me come up there to do a photo shoot and to do some voiceovers. Like, you know, they did a thing showing my feet, you know, going up, you know, me saying something about, you know, they were wondering who's going to replace Piper's Pit, but, you know, it takes a woman to go in a man's shoes or something like that. I don't remember what it was, but before I did my Missy's Manners, I mean, they had a whole set built with, you know, a couches and backdrops and all this other stuff, and um, Vince, like, went over what I should say in the back. And so I was just going out there, you know, it wasn't scripted, but it was like what he said. And I remember saying, I, I'm kind of like a baby face. This is not really good. I don't know how to do this. And the first time I went to interview, I interviewed, um, uh, what's his name with the megaphone? Um, Jimmy Hart. And I go to ask him a question and I have the microphone in my hand and I don't give him the microphone. He has to take the microphone to talk because I didn't never, I had never interviewed anyone. And they didn't Needless to say, right? huh? no, we didn't that. practice them. Needless to say, my interviews, all of them, you can see them on YouTube. They stink. 
they they're really stink. Oh my god, time. they're entertaining because they're like, this is really bad. It's like a train wreck, you know. <laughs> and you know it's going to be bad, but you just keep watching anyway because it's going to get worse. Going to get worse. So they were pretty bad. They were pretty bad. I just wish it's worth watching them for your outfits. Yeah, for my outfits. <laughs> I know, and I got to keep the clothes too. I was really lucky. I got to keep all the clothes. But if he would have just let me do it my way and let me be Missy Hyatt and done it and done flip it ah, you know the bubblehead missy i think they would have been better oh, that's not you yeah <laughs> thanks <laughs> and you you actually interviewed macho man on that i watched yeah. that one um what was he like to work with i i didn't even really get to talk to him because i just stayed in my dressing room i was so scared you know i stayed in my dressing room at wwe and i remember when i first met um hulk hogan hulk hogan comes up to me and vince is like this is the Hulkster, and Hulk, and Hulk goes, oh, so I hear you're here to take my spot. And I was like, no, your chest is still bigger than mine. That's okay, you know. And he was really cool. It, Hogan was really nice to me. And everybody that I met up there was really, really nice. But I just stayed in my dressing room. I was I was just really intimidated and scared. And I was by myself. And I had never been anywhere by myself. I either had John with me or there was Eddie with me. And so... I didn't feel comfortable being out and around. I, mean, I played with the dog, the um, the bulldogs, or, or Matilda. I, yeah, I played with Matilda a little bit, and that was about it. And she smelled funny. The, I think they gave they gave her liver drops or something, but Matilda Matilda smelled. But other than that, so you basically walked out of your dressing room without ever talking to Macho Man. Yeah, right without ever talking set. to him, without doing anything, and and just going out there and doing the thing. Today they would never do that. I know, I know. So was there a script I was involved? Born too early. Yeah, was there a script involved? No, there was no script. No script. Just Vince told me what to say, and I went out there and said it. <laughs> Did you ever talk to Elizabeth much? No, right. no. The only time I talked to her was out there doing the interview. You know, I think I might have talk, said two words to her before we went in, before we went out. And you also interviewed Harley Race. Yeah, right? Harley Race. Yep. And then... Strike and Jimmy Force. Hart and the Can-Am Connection. Yeah. That was horrible. Um, that was, it was so cheesy. One. Did they, so they gave you the idea for that Ken Am connection one? That yeah, they told me what to do, yeah. Because they aren't the greatest on the mic. Oh, I know, time. I know. <laughs> and I mean, and I wasn't the greatest on the mic either, so it was kind of bad and bad and everything. Um, you had your character, you were good on the And I think character. it would have been good too is if we would have done the Missy Manners in, in towns that knew me, like Dallas and something like that, instead of out there in Vegas. I did it in Vegas, and then I did some in Connecticut. So, I would have gotten more booze and stuff like that, I think. But I mean, he he wanted. He told me later when they wanted um, when my when I showed up at Anaheim for the next TV taping. He's like, well, you know, we have an idea. We'd rather have you standing up to show your legs because you got legs. But we want to do an interview segment like that. But we and what we want to do is have you become a federette and then do something with the honky tonk man and the honky tonk man keeps aggravating you and some I don't I don't I didn't really grasp the whole idea that he had and then you'll have your own segment and I'm like you want me to be a federate and, and wear that little outfit and take ring jackets and be one of three other girls or two other girls you know and so I was like, hmm, that seems like a step down. And I remember I went and called Eddie. And um, I said, Eddie, this is what they want me to do. And Eddie's like, you're, you're not a Federette. You're Missy Hyatt. You don't have to do that. And so I went and told Vince. I go, well, I talked to Eddie. And Eddie, and he's like, well, that's the problem right there. Yeah, he works for a different company. You shouldn't be talking, you know, to him. Our, what we're doing, you know, and everything like that. And I said, well, maybe the time's not right for me to be here. And he's like, yeah, I guess maybe you're right. Time's not right if you don't want to be a federette. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. So I had to go back home and go up to dust after 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 walking up to Jim Crockett because when UWF like Bill Watts didn't want to let me out of my contract and 
when I first met Jimmy Crockett, I had met him before when me and John were in Connecticut, but he probably doesn't remember meeting me. But when Jimmy Crockett came in, you know, the first thing I do is I walked up to him and shook his hand and go, I'm Missy Hyatt and I want out of my contract because I'm going WWF to be a superstar and get a doll. <laughs> and he's like, okay, you can have, you can have, you can get out of your contract. So, you know, hence three months later, you know, I go up to the office. Eddie's on the book. Eddie's booking UWF, and I had to go up to Jim Crockett and go, "Hi, Mr. Crockett, remember me?" Knock, knock, knock on the door. Hi, I'd really like my job back. Do you think there's anything for me? Please remember me, please. You know, like that. So. But he, but he, and he just told me to go down there and talk to Dusty and see what Dusty has. I was like, okay. So I went and talked to Dusty and Dusty said, oh, they didn't know how to use you. I'll know how to use you, right? I'll put you to work. I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> I guess you were uh, under a pay per appearance basis. No, no, I was weekly. I got, I had, a, I, was, I was, as a matter of fact, a trivia, trivia, trivia question is the first woman to have a, a guaranteed contract in wrestling was me. Because in UWF, I had a guaranteed contract, weekly guaranteed money. And so um, Vince was going to give me weekly guarantee plus all my clothes, which I love that idea, all the clothes and shoes. And so you stuff. would have had a weekly guarantee as a federate. I guess. I don't know. I wonder if that would have held up. But I mean, how many federate outfits could I have bought, though? That's the only but, thing. But as you said, there was an angle there with the honky tonk man. I so guess. I don't know. Just, I, I don't guess know. You're too young, unfortunately. Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I was 24 years old and not new to the business and didn't know anything and and just you know I should have just shut my mouth and been a federate. Because they weren't really, other than Elizabeth, they weren't really pushy any females. So if they, I know, that push, I know, I know. Rude. Oh my gosh, hindsight. <laughs>